too much to stay up all night practicing, sweet. Well, your luck's bound to turn, Cincinnati. Oh, innkeeper shucking coins. Folks in Boonesboro would see me. Yeah, go ahead, now, just go ahead. You just watch this. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it. It's a mighty fine toss. <laughs> Sure, thank you for a winner that time, Cincinnati. Only way for me to win is to quit. How much you take off of me? Yeah, let's see now. Oh, no more than 25 shillings. Why don't you just set fire to this bug-infested place of yours and open up business as a full-time coin tosser? You do better. <laughs> oh, the coach is here. Yeah, well, it's about time. Why ever get into these things? It seems like everything has come to your place. You're late, Abram. Darn near lost the wheel splicing through Warren's Creek. Yeah. Well, if you lost it, I wouldn't have money for my fair home. Have a good trip, Cincinnati. Yeah, well, don't spend them coins too fast. Give them a chance to get used to the new mm. owner. Huh. here was left behind by Mr. Cincinnati, and I want you to take Mr. it... Mr. Sweet, I got Mr. Brooklyn's boy to learn me the alphabet. Ah, oh, that's real nice, Lucas. Did you mean it when you said I could get the night clerk if I learned me how to read? Lucas, there's always a promotion in my tavern for a boy with ambition. But right now, you better take off and catch that coach. And you're looking at the man that discovered the pot of gold at the end of it. <laughs> Come on, Abram. Take me back to sweets. <laughs> got to do is understand about the great Boonesboro race. It, it is the biggest athletic event west of Plymouth Rock. Yeah, I never heard of it. I know that, sweet. Why do you think I'm telling you? Well, I still don't understand if my man Lucas fits in with a horse race. It ain't a horse race. How many times have I got to tell you? Look, 
Every spring, this band of Indians comes to Boonesboro, see, to do their trading, and, well, they stay around town a couple of days just relaxing. Well, now, six, eight years ago, this band come to town with a brave that they figured could just outrun anything on two feet. <laughs> they was bragging on him, and we got to bragging on Daniel Boone, and that's how all the betting started. Betting? You said betting? You never saw anything like it in your life, sweet. About three or four days before the race, folks come to town like they was running from a flood with all the worldly goods, just looking for a bet. I recall about four years ago, a man won himself a wigwam complete with a squaw and four papooses. Squaw and four papooses? What did he do with them? He drowned his wife and saved them. Said the squaw was a better cook. <laughs> Well, Daniel Boone done all our racing at first, and he won every time. But then they came up with a rule that the same man couldn't race more than three times. So we had to get ourselves another man. Uh, find someone? We lost three years running. Oh. Hey, tell me something, Sister Nettis. Them engines, uh, what do they bet? Skins. Skins. No hard money, huh? Well, skins is hard money. Do you know what a prime beaver pelt brings in Louisville? Plenty. You ought to know it. Of course, there ain't too much hard money in Boonesboro. But anything a man signs to, he redeems it come skin selling time in Louisville. And back home, a man's mark is just as good as gold. <laughs> so, uh, you ready to uh, make yourselves a little deal? Well, I don't know. Uh, Lucas means an awful lot to me. It could mean a lot more to both of us. Yeah, but uh, even though Lucas is a slave, I always treat him like I was my own kin. Well, afraid I couldn't sell him to you, Cincinnati. Who said anything about buying him? All I want to do is just rent him for a spell. Rent him? How much? Well, uh, how much you want? Three shillings out of every bet put down in Boonesboro. Three shillings? Without my man Lucas, you might lose the race four years running. That's highway robbery. Three shillings out of a bet is downright highway robbery. Now, 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 Cincinnati. There's one tavern keeper to another. You know as well as I do, you got to spend money to make some. When did you ever part with a penny, sweet? Well, I'm doing you a favor. All you're doing is spending a measly three shillings in order to make ten, twenty or more. One shilling. Three shillings and no deal. What am I going to tell the settlers? I'll tell them how much money they're going to make off their bets on Lucas. Better yet, let old Lucas give them a little demonstration. All right. Three shillings out of every bet. But I am going to keep track of them in a book. Yeah, I'll be right there in Boonesboro to see that you do it. The three shillings comes with the bet. But if I'm going to take the bets down, I've got to trust the settlers. Why, they don't even put their money down until it. They... You trust the settlers and welcome. It's three shillings and no race. All right. All right. Plus down payment of five pounds for the rental of my man. But you're already getting three shillings. That's for the race. I got to be paid for my time. Lucas does a lot of work around here, you know. You're leaving something out, ain't you, sweet? What's that? How much you're charging for the air he breathes while he's in Boonesboro? Oh, no, Cincinnati, I wouldn't do that to you. That I'm throwing in gratis. Ain't enough if you both want to ride first class. Uh, how much if one of us wants to ride second? Uh, five pounds. In, inside, Lucas. I don't want you exposed to the weather. You're too valuable. Now you just mind what Mr. Cincinnati tells you, Lucas. It's me, sweet. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a whole pound if you'll hire Linus out to me for one week. You, uh, figured on going to the blacksmith business, are you, my lord? No, 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 it's nothing like that. It's just that Lucas has stuck to his bed. Sick. It's just for one week. Well, now, uh, I'll settle for, uh, three pounds. Three pounds. Mm -hmm. i tell you what, Brooklyn. I'll split the difference with you. One pound ten. Well, now, considering you're the one that's in need of a surface, it's, uh, two pounds ten. You think I'm made of money, Brooklyn? 
No, no. Uh, here, regardless of that, uh, it's two pounds ten and no linus. Uh, all right. All right. In advance. You mean you wouldn't even trust me for a week? Now, we've been neighbors for some ten years, ain't we? Uh, not enough answer for you? Linus! Oh, Linus! It's sweet out here, what's the you? Just look at him, Chief. Now, do I still sound like a man who speaks with a forked tongue? Yes. Well, then I guess I gotta prove it to you. Now, you pick out the fastest brave you got, understand? Understand. Him, straight arrow. Him, Linus. Straight arrow, best runner in all Indian nation. Well, I still say that Linus will run him right into the ground. I'm here to tell you right now. It just don't make no difference who them engines race against us. Lucas here will run him right in the ground. <laughs> well, he's mighty tall in all Cincinnati. But... Walt here almost beat Dan once, you know. And there ain't been nobody around here ever come that close. Yeah, and Walt's grown a mite. Well, Walt's just fine for ordinary purposes, but we're talking about betting real money. We're talking about our chances for making a, a real killing. Straight arrow, fastest runner in Kentucky. Sure hate to see you squandering all that wampum on the loser, Chief. Who you call loser? Straight arrow swifter than North Wind, faster than Antelope. Straight arrow brother to Eagle. Step aside, son. You insult brother to Eagle. A whole tar nation, Chief. If you're so all fired sure of him, let's have a little demonstration. Straight arrow against Linus here. Bear Claw say, straight arrow lose. You win number one squaw. Oh. <laughs> She got a lot of confidence in your boy, Chief. Take on Hatsi Tongo, daughter of Shaman. Very wise woman. Yeah. I hate to have you lose her, Chief. Then this sacred stick, what you bet? Um, uh... You sure you can beat this redskin, Linus? How lonesome do you want him to be? A piece of the king's own silver. You expecting us to bet every shilling we got on somebody we ain't ever seen race? Well, no, of course not. What do you think we're doing out here, anyway? Walt will race Lucas out to the meadow and back. Now, that's fair, ain't it, Daniel? Well, it's up to Walt. I'll race him, Daniel. All right, boy, now, just imagine you got a lot of gold riding on your feet. Go, boy. <laughs> Get ready. Go! Yeah. Yeah. Here he comes. <laughs> oh, that Lucas is up, lady devil. You good friend to Indian, sweet. I always keep a soft spot in my heart for the underdog. Oh, Linus. Linus, would you mind taking a little stroll? Me and the chief are going to smoke a pipe apiece. And I don't want any of that smoke getting in your lungs, you know. You've got to keep yourself in trim for the big race tomorrow. Yes. Fine boy, Linus. Him make good brave. Yep. <laughs> And it's only going to cost you five shillings out of every bet you make with the white settlers. Three shillings out of every bet. I'm sorry, Cully, but that's the way it is. You got to look on it like it was kind of insurance. Well, I look on it like it's robbery. Yeah. What do you say, Dan? Well, the way I understand it, the money doesn't go to Cincinnati. He just found a man to run the race. And that was the only way Sweet would agree to hire him out. That's exactly right, Daniel. But the point is, do we want to win or not? Well, why win if it takes all our money to do it? Well, you're going to put a lot more than three shillings on the bet, ain't you, Cully? I still say three shillings are too much. 
Now, one's more than enough. All right. I'll come down to four shillings. One. Two. And that's my final offer. Look, how many times have I got to tell you? If Sweet don't get his three shillings a bet, he is going to take his man out of the race. All right. Two shillings a bet, and that's final. One. All right, Chief, you win. But only because I consider myself a friend of the Indian. But that don't include Linus's food nor his wages. Wages? I thought him slave. Only when he ain't running. So that means you gotta pay me. I remember, Chief. You better keep Linus in camp till the race. Wouldn't do for them folks in Boonesboro to catch sight of him running. I will. And Linus? Yes, sir, Mrs. Sweet. You mind what the Chief tells you? Yes, sir. Well, it's been a pleasure doing business with you, Chief. And it does my heart good knowing I could help you folks. That's Mr. Johnny Conklin. One pound and four, haven't you, Cincinnati? Wait, yeah, Mr. Morris, before you. Now, come on, Cincinnati. Get me down. Yeah. Joseph Jones. I've got you down shillings. already, Johnny. How many times have I oh, got to test? Right. Right. Now, will you no, quit no, your shop? Now, listen, the race ain't even until tomorrow. Now, will you just, take your just, turn? Just a minute. You're forgetting something, ain't you, Cincinnati? Well, now, wait a minute. I got everything right down here. Nobody's going to cheat you. That ain't what I'm talking about. How come he gets ahead of us? Oh, now, just a minute. If you'll excuse me, we got a little private business to take care of. So, uh, you... Clem, will you take over here for a minute? Yeah, now, get your bets ready. We'll be right back in just a minute. Now, what was it you wanted? Well, I don't want no private talk. All I want is my three shillings out of every bet like we agreed on. You got any idea how much trouble we had just getting two shillings a bet? Even if they seen Lucas run? Oh, you gave him a demonstration like I told you, didn't well, you? Of course I did. And Lucas won, didn't he? You don't understand. And still sir. them fools object to my getting three measly shillings out of every bet when they're going to make themselves a fortune? Now, there ain't nothing guaranteed, sweet. What do you mean by that? Well, for one thing, how do we know who them engines is running against Lucas? You heard something? No, but I ain't got a hankering to be tarred and feathered if Lucas loses. Now, now you've got every right to pull out of this thing if you want to. All you got to do is just give me back my five pounds and I'll give you back Lucas. Of course, nobody makes no money, but you got every right, seeing as how the arrangement was for three shillings out of every bet. Well, you know I ain't about to turn down even two shillings when I come all this way and went to all that trouble to help you folks out. Oh, that was purely generous of you, sweet. I want you to know that Shem Sweet ain't a man to go back in his word. Shem Sweet's word is his bond, Cincinnati. Seems to me you lost me about three turns back there. Are you telling me you are going to accept two shillings out of a bet? Ain't got no choice, have I? Well, ain't none of us got a choice, Shem. Promoting's hard business. All right, you all want to get rich, don't you? Come on, get your coins up here. That's the stuff. I'll take over now. Thank you, Clem. All right, come on now, then. It's 45 for the calf. <laughs> and, and Hendrickson, 75. So that's the stuff. All right, Davidson. And there you go. And Conklin, if I get yours. Sure smiling, ain't they, Chief? Try believe Tall Pine win race. Oh, named him Tall Pine, did you? Tall Pine bring honor to Cherokee. And not to mention little Wampum, eh, Chief? Nothing like a little friendly competition to bring our people together, eh? Cherokee have wise saying. Good Indian finish in happy hunting ground. Oh, I'll remember that, Chief. Say, uh, your medicine man ain't forgetting my two shillings every bet, is he? He'll remember, but only one shilling. Oh, one shilling. Uh, uh, that's right, Chief. I keep forgetting. Mr. Sweet, mm -hmm. see you for a minute. Oh, sure, sure, Linus. Uh, excuse me, Chief. Well, now, Linus, uh, they treating you good, boy? No complaints about the engines. Ah. Oh. Say, them engines got a new name for you. You heard what it is? I heard. They got one for you, too. Is that so? I like what? Natokonoma. Ah, sounds mighty impressive. What's it mean? Big frog who croaks. Is that what you wanted to tell me, Linus? No, sir. I, uh, 
been doing some thinking, Mr. Sweet. Now, 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 Linus, you shouldn't do nothing like that. It's liable to sap your strength. You should be doing nothing but thinking about that race tomorrow. That's exactly what I've been thinking about. And I also happens to know that Lucas is not in Stoverville like you said either. Oh, where would he be? In Boonboro. What would he be doing there? The same thing I'm doing here, brooding about that race. You question the word of Samuel Sweet, Linus? Who do you think you are? Tall Pine. Oh, them engines sure swelled your head, Linus. No, sir. I swelled it all by myself. What are you trying to tell me, Linus? The chief made me honorary engine. Well, now, isn't that nice? I say, maybe we can make you an honorary white man. The chief also expects me to win. Well, of course he does. We all expect you to win, Linus. That's what the race is for. The people in Boonburg expect for Lucas to win, too, because he's running against me, ain't he, Mr. Sweet? Ah, you saw right through my little scheme, didn't you, Lu uh, Linus? Yeah. Sham Sweet, arranging the race of the century. Ever stop to ask yourself what for, Linus? I'll tell you what for. To bring a little joy and happiness to the lives of everybody. I, you take the poor white man, hacking his way through the wilderness. Nothing but hard work and privation. And them engines scalping and plundering. I said to myself, I said, Shem Sweet, here's your chance to take their minds off their miseries. Linus? You realize you and your brother are going to make history tomorrow? I don't want to make history, Mr. Sweet. I just want to make me some money. I can't believe I'm hearing right. I'll say it once more, Mr. Cincinnatus. Ain't going to be no race at all unless I'm in on a share of the profits. Profits? <clears throat> uh, why don't you just come over here and, and tell me about it? Yes, sir. Step right over here, Lucas. <clears throat> what profits you talking about? What you're making off of me. The sun must have got to your head, boy. <laughs> I've been working you too hard, right? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. Well, now, all you ain't need ain't nothing is... a little money won't cure, Mr. Cincinnati. I know I'm just a poor, ignorant slave. But I got eyes and ears. And I've been putting things together like... What things? Well, I know for certain the settlers are betting everything they've got on the race. And I know Mr. Sweet stung you for five pounds for my hire. That's right. Right out of my own pocket. And I also heard that the settlers have to pay Mr. Sweet two shillings for every bet they make. Now, you can't keep things quiet in a place as small as Boonsboro. You ought to know that, Mr. Cincinnati. Now, the only thing I ain't figured out yet is what you're getting out of this. Well, nothing except what I make betting on you. What you make betting and all that brew you're selling on a counter race. <clears throat> well, now, maybe you have got a point there, Lucas. Uh... Why don't we talk about your share of my winnings tomorrow? <laughs> What's the matter? It's my leg. Suddenly beginning to act up. Mighty strange how sudden it was. Sure can't run if it keeps on hurting. Doggone if I don't feel like I'm about to pull up lane. All right, we'll talk about your share of the winnings now. How much? How much is Boonesboro betting? Well, what's that got to do with it? Lots. I want a tenth of all the bets. One tenth? Well, well, that would, would come to more than 100 pounds. A pile like that could almost make you feel free. And I want it in advance, too. Otherwise, no race. I guess the folks around here would be pretty unhappy with you if you had to tell them it wasn't going to be no race. I reckon they'd even close your tavern down out of pure spite. I just can't believe this is tall pine talking. Just plain loud of honey. And you're being plain unreasonable, that's what... All I'm asking is half of what you're getting from the tribe here. Only I won't mind in advance. Now, what's so unreasonable about that? Well, what just about ruined me, that's all. It'll pain me to let on to the chief that my brother Lucas is running again now. Ah, now, you wouldn't do that to old Sham Sweet. A man who's looked upon you and Lucas like his own two sons. It'll sure make me feel low, doing something like that to my own pa. Of course, we was partners now. All right. All right, I'll share it with you after the race. Uh oh. Before and in my hand. Uh, I gotta say this for you, Linus. You sure picked up the white man's ways in a hurry. You can't scorn a man for trying to improve himself, can you, Mr. Sweet? <laughs> Mrs. 
side down. Now that'll be uh, two shillings. Mm -hmm. And there's your change. How much for the goose? Looks a little scrawny to me, Abigail. She's all plucked and ready for roasting. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe six shillings. I'll take it. Now, never mind paying me. Just put it on Lucas to win. Just, just a minute, Abigail. Uh, come back here. I, I, uh, I can't take this. And why not? Well, I happen to know that Jed's crop didn't do too good this year. Since when did you start worrying about Jed and me, hmm? I, I just can't take a wager from a woman. You trying to tell me, Cincinnatus, it's only a man privileged to put money on a sure winner? Well, it ain't that exactly. Well? I suppose Lucas should lose. I'll take my chances. I still can't do it. You hear that, ladies? What do you mean? I'll get it. Dang harpies. They're all after me. I never saw anything like it in my life. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were fighting to run that race yourself. <laughs> That'll... Every blamed female with an extra jar of bizarre turnips is just clawing at me to lay their bets on Lucas. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Well, you want to see me ruined? Every bet I've taken is going to cost me 10%. I thought you told me all the sellers had agreed to pay you two shillings per bet. But that takes care of Sham Sweet. How about Lucas? He's asking for his share now. How ungrateful can he be? That's exactly what I told him, Becky. I took this poor, ignorant lad out of obscurity and brought him to Boonesboro at my own expense. And I said, boy, I'm going to make your feet famous. And then he turned against you. I knew you wouldn't believe it when I told you. Well, it's getting harder and harder to turn an honest profit these days. Daniel, you're laughing at me. But I'm telling you there ain't going to be no race tomorrow unless I pay him 10% of every bet I take. Then he doesn't run. It isn't the end of the world. Doesn't run. Becky, after I promised every critter in Boonesboro all the money they're going to make off them engines? Well, they might settle for a tar and feathering. Now, Daniel, you... You don't really think they'd do that, now, do you? Well, if they didn't get to shoot you afterwards. Well, it sure wasn't my idea for Lucas just to help himself to the settler's money. That's exactly the point. It should have been. Why shouldn't he share in the profits? He's doing all the work. But I done all the promoting. All he did was the running. Look, Becky, it ain't me. It's them settlers. If you got any idea how much trouble I had just getting two shillings a bet for Shem Sweet, and now can you see me asking them for more? I just wish I'd never heard of this Lucas Hunter. Dale, all I was trying to do was just get some money for my friends in Boonesboro. <laughs> I sure wish I knew of a way of sneaking out of town with a man seven foot tall. You know, Cincinnati, there is a way out. How? For heaven's sake, tell me how, Dan. Well, didn't you tell me there was about 900 pounds of Boonesboro bets, including prime pelts? Yes. Well, that'll make about 90 pounds due to Lucas. Well, that's just for running. Well, how much are you aiming to bet on Lucas? Oh, I reckon about 100 pounds. Why? Well, why don't you use that to pay him? You'll still come out ahead with all the extra business that the race always brings in. Are you asking me to take every penny I have in this whole miserable world and just give it to Lucas? I'm not asking you to do anything, Cincinnatus. I'm just telling you there's a way out. Dan, it ain't human to ask a man to take the money he's going to get rich on and, and just give it away. Well, then find the money someplace else. But where? There ain't no extra money left in Boonesboro. Sounds like a good idea to me, Cincinnatus. For who? For Lucas? Well, what about me? He wins, and I get to stand around and watch folks stuff their pockets. Well, it looks like the only thing left for you to do is ask folks for 10% of whatever they bet. I could just jump off the cliff over Catfish Creek. Except there ain't no water in it. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going back to the tavern and get my hundred pounds. Panel, profit system still could use some tinkering with. What's the profit system, Paul? I thought you were asleep, young man. I was, but Cincinnati woke me up. He sounds real unhappy, Cincinnati. 
Israel, it's late, and you should go right back up to bed. Oh, well, Ma, I promise, please, in five minutes. Please? Well, five minutes, but not a second longer. Can I help you make bullets, Pa? Is your hand steady? Yes, sir. Is your eye clear? Well, I can, uh... See that big chip on that log over there at the end of the fireplace? Well, since you put it there, I'm not too surprised. All right. Be careful. What's the profit system, Pa? Profit system? Well, that's a system we live under. Say that uh, I go out and trap a prime beaver, and uh, then I skin it and cure the hide and take it into Louisville, and somebody pays me 15 shillings for it. Then I take the money home, give it to your mother, and she buys things for you in the house. Like she goes out and, and she sees this prime goose. And Mr. Stovall says he'll take, oh, six shillings for it. And she gives him six shillings and brings home the goose. And back in Louisville, the man your father sold the skin to is making a fine hat of it. And he'll sell that hat to somebody. So he'll have money, too, to go out and buy things with. I see. And then Mr. Stovall is taking the six shillings he got for the goose. And then he goes out. Buys what he wants. That's right. There's something you don't understand? You and the man in Louisville, Mr. Stovall, they're all making money. I understand that, fine, but... But what, dear? Well, poor Cincinnati. He's out in the cold. He had to spend all his money. Heard you say he was going to give it to Lucas. Uh, well, I guess, uh... Cincinnati's kind of got himself in a trap. Well, then, it always isn't a profit system. Sometimes it's a spend system. <laughs> I guess it is. Spend for some, profit for others. Now, don't you think Lucas should make money for running the race? Well, sure, but Cincinnati isn't the only one betting on the race. Don't you think the other ones should spend, too? Don't look at me. He ask you. <sighs> Uh, well, Israel, it's kind of complicated. You see, Cincinnati has already collected two shillings from everybody that's bet on the race. And he's afraid if he asks for more money, they won't give it to him. He's afraid they'll tar and feather him. You heard him say that, Ma. Mm-hmm. And I also heard someone say, just five minutes. I promise to go right to bed. I'm going. Mm -hmm. Lucas, how tall are you? Oh, 16, 17 feet. I just remember which. You're not. How tall do you think I am? Gosh, you're taller than Pa. Up to now, he's the tallest man I ever saw. You should see my baby brother. He's even taller than me. I'm an Ellie. Where's he? Back in Davis County, working for the Smith. Doggone, I wish I hadn't mentioned old Linus. Making me homesick. Here comes Cincinnati. Hi, Cincinnati. Great day for the race, isn't it? So great about it? You got it. I had it. It's yours now. I just wanted to know how it felt. I got no use for it. Might as well keep it. Thanks. You didn't have any trouble collecting. Oh, no trouble at all. Of course, there was one group who wanted to just hang me on the spot. Well, I wasn't worried because they was too busy arguing with the other two groups. Other two? The second one wanted to run me out of town on a rail, while the third bunch wanted to have me burned at the stake. You can't be mean, and this is your own money. Well, it was my money. Of course, I'll uh, be happy to hold it for you until after the race. Mighty nice of you, Mr. Cincinnati. It'll kind of remind me of what I'm running for. Lucas! Run, boy! Run! Linus? You're the last person I ever expected to see out here. Yes, I, I am at that, brother. Who are you? You don't seem too surprised to see me, though. I guess we got some things to catch up on, Brother Lucas. Now, here's the way the situation is. 
You got your engine money? You got yours? More than I ever expected to have in my whole life. What you gonna do with it? Well, all my life I wanted to own my own anvil. Getting tired of pounding on Brookings. But he still owns you, Linus. Maybe. But he won't own an anvil. That's gonna be all mine. And that's where you miscalculating the uh, termination of, of the system. I is? You see that bug? Mm hmm. That's a letter, brother. The letter A. Is that a good one? Well, it ain't much by itself. But if you get enough of these bugs together in the right order of placement, you see, you got yourself a word. I'd still rather have me an animal. You will also notice that all of these little scrawny letters are black. So they is. And this page, this is a page, mm. brother. It's white. You still ain't, ain't, ain't catching the, the abulation of, of, of my meaning? No, can't say that I is. Well, what I'm trying to tell you, Linus, is that white ain't nothing without black. You see? Well, Chief, I see you're betting real strong this year. This year, we win again, boom. Our money says it's our turn this year, Chief. Well, however it comes out, let's hope it's a real contest. Contest? Uh, sort of the same. You know, like uh, the runners evenly matched. Like, uh, one good as other same? Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. Even, yes. <laughs> I know even. <laughs> yeah. hey, good, good chief. <laughs> well, chief, your yeah. braves can put their bets in the tavern right alongside ours. You. I'm going to look at that one now. I'll show them where to put them. Yeah, there. Fine. Now, the race will begin, Chief, when the sun is directly overhead. Is your runner all set? But, Pa! All set. <laughs> Show us ours, huh, Daniel? Bet your boots, Cincinnati. You running straight air again this year, Chief? No. Straight arrow get fat, get too slow. Indians have other runner. Oh. Well, uh, wish him luck for us. And by the way, we have a new runner this year, too. And I think I'd better warn you. He goes like the wind. That's what I gotta tell you. Some wind slow, some fast. You gotta let me tell Israel. you that. Now, Chief, is your betting list ready? All here. And ours right here. Well, I reckon we're all set. But, Pa, won't you let me tell you... Israel, whatever you have to tell me, I reckon can wait until after this race is over. Now, do you understand? That's final, son. All right, folks, come on. Come on. Won't somebody listen? You don't seem very excited about the race. Is something wrong? Ma, have you seen Cincinnati? No, I haven't. Well, I gotta tell him something. Paul wouldn't let me tell him. Can't you tell me? Man's secret. No, it's not supposed to be. Well, sort of. But it shouldn't. There he is! Hey, Cincinnati! Cincinnati, I gotta talk to you. Not now, boy. The race is about to start. Luke is out in the woods, and I gotta go fetch him. But I tried to tell Paul. Two of them. Two of what, Israel? Two runners. Well, they're supposed to be. There's uh, Lucas and their champion. No, there are two Lucases. Well, the guy running for the Indians, he looks just like Lucas. He's even as tall as Lucas. Boy, you start from the beginning. Talk real slow so I don't miss a thing. Oh. All right, now, remember this morning 
When I followed Lucas out into the woods to help him train, well, I lost him. But then when I found him, instead of one Lucas, there was two Lucases. And I backed off real quiet like Paul learned me. And I ran all the way to Boonesboro, but I couldn't find anybody to listen except you. Cincinnati, you were listening, weren't you? Boy, <laughs> you gotta find your Paul. Come on, boy. Sorry. It, it sounded like they were brothers. They were counting out all the money Cincinnati gave me. Well, I, I couldn't tell what they were doing, because all of a sudden they shook hands. I got out of there real quiet like you showed me. And I ran all the way back here. But you wouldn't listen to me. So I had to tell Cincinnati. That's all I know, Paul. What is it that has happened, friend? <sighs> Angry Wolf, tell me what you say and what you do. Completely two things apart. What is it that you try to do to me? Never did. I just don't, don't think it's a good idea. I tell you, I didn't know no, no more about it than you done. All right, go talk with Forky Tongue. Who are you calling old? You! Whiskers like goat, eyes like goat, smell like goat. You ain't no better roses yourself, Chief. Well, you skinny. You ever think you'd be this important, Linus? Can't say that I have, Lucas. Hey, I wonder where Mr. Sweet's going. Going somewhere, Sweet? Oh, uh, uh, well, it don't, it don't seem right for an outsider to be mixing in a local squabble. Well, now, that's where you're dead wrong, friend. We like outsiders mixing in, especially when they're more inside than outside. Yeah, well... I think, uh... Oh, 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 no, it would be plumb unneighborly of you to depart before the fun starts. Let's just walk right over here, shall well, we? Uh, Excuse us, friend, we're just coming right through here. Uh. You try to make fool of Bear Claw. Uh, I always knew you was low, sweet. And our Cincinnati says, as one tavern keeper to another... Don't just... you tavern keeper me, you miserly squeezing old bag of bones. Well, I'll, I'll give back the money I took out of the bets. I'll even refund the two pounds for the... It rental. was five pounds! You conniving! Don't give Big Frog to Cherokee. Him burn good at stake. Oh. Daniel, you wouldn't let him do that to me, would you? One thing is sure, sweet. You're going to give back every shilling you scrounged out of all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, you got it all wrong, Daniel. You're accusing an innocent promoter. It was them two, uh, two fellas there, the brothers that did the scrounging. Only to get what was coming to them. And they're going to get what was coming to them. But only if they race. That's right, Cully. What about the race, Dan? Yeah, Dan, do we let him race? Well, it don't seem sensible to give up the race just because Sweet tried to cheat both sides. The runners are here. We can't blame all this on them, and we have got our bets down. I say let them race. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, Chief? Both runners tall, swift, like ponies. Who here can say which man faster? Bear Claw say they race. Yeah, good. <laughs> are you willing? Just point us in the right direction, Mr. Boone. All right, from the fort, you go to the pond, behind the pond, over to the cow meadow, behind that, around the oak stand, and back to the fort, twice around. If I was you and I was a praying man, landlord, I'd pray that they both win. Are we really gonna race, Pa? Israel, later on, when we get a minute, I'm gonna apologize properly for not letting you tell me what you saw. You don't have to. Now, I'm going to say get ready, and then I'm going to blast off my blunderbuss. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, get ready. <laughs> you know, we just might have ourselves a race yet. <laughs> Tall pine. I'm Antley. Even I could have finished the race by now. Cherokee have wise saying. Good brave. No make crooked arrow. Shoot straight. What's it mean, Cincinnati? 
I'll tell you what it means. It means we've been took, that's what. Like you're going to take them? Oh, no, wait a minute, Daniel. I, I was just thinking about the... Well, line in your own pockets. That's what all of us were thinking about. You, Sweet, the Chief, every one of us that had a bet on that race. Well, now, to tell you the truth, I wasn't thinking about money at all. I was thinking all these folks and their high hopes was up, and, well, all that anticipating and fun just went down the crick. Well, we still got a barrel of money left, and some of us were going to lose half of it. So what do you say we celebrate looking sheepish? Friend of Indian have good idea. Bear claw bet, big frog who crook. Drink more fire water than old white goat. Who you calling a goat? I'll take Cincinnatus for 20 shillings. I'll take 10 of that. Put 10 shillings on Cincinnatus. I believe, uh, I believe I'll bet on the old frog. There is one <coughs> consolation, Daniel. <laughs> What's that, Cincinnatus? Uh, the Hunter brothers, you know. <laughs> They'll never show their face in civilized parts again. <laughs> I, I can just see them now. They're hiding some deep dark forests. <laughs> For fear of being brought to justice. <laughs> It says here that West Indian sugar is one of the best commodity buyers this season. You sure it says that, brother? You ain't misdoubting the Philadelphia Gazetteer, are you, brother? I ain't misdoubting the paper, brother. But since I know you can't read, how would you know that West Indian sugar is one of the better commodity buyers this season? Well, it ought to say that. Well, if you say so, it ought to. We ain't done too bad on the exchange, though, have we, brother Linus? Not half bad, Brother Lucas. Gosh, you ever stop to think what you could be if you could read? Yeah, old man Sweet's night clerk. <laughs> Here's to illiteracy. And, and fast, fast beat. beat, yeah. <laughs>